Hi, this is Irv Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today I'm going to help you become a successful 3D printer by providing you with six special hints, things that I ran into when I started 3D printing that will help you be more successful. And the reason this is important is because 3D printing is not science. It's not engineering. Yes, there's science and engineering involved, but no one can give you a precise formula that will work with your printer every time. And the reason is it's a bit like baking. Every oven, the temperature is a little different. Every batch of flour is a little different. If you're at a higher altitude, you need to bake things a longer period of time. If the water is different, baking is different. Well, in 3D printing, the temperature of every hot end, every nozzle is a little different. The calibration of every printer is a little different. Every brand of filament is different. There are all these variables and it's a bit of an art. In fact, because it's a bit of an art, that's why I find it so exciting. You get to build this skill as an artist, a 3D printing artist. So stay tuned and let's learn some things together. Okay, you have that box that just arrived at your doorstep with your new 3D printer. Maybe it's a kit, maybe it's fully assembled. You're ready to open it up. Stop. You need to do a couple things first. The first thing you need to do, and this is hint number one, learn about all of the parts of a 3D printer before you even open up the box. Sure, there's an instruction manual. It will tell you how to assemble it. But if you have a basic understanding of the components of your 3D printer, before you get started, your life will be much easier. You need to understand how a filament is pulled in by the extruder. It's fed either directly to the hot end or through a Bowden tube to the hot end. At the hot end, you have a cooling fan, you have a nozzle. It lays print filament down onto a print bed that is probably today heated. Your system has a power supply, it has firmware. You need to know what these things are before you get started. So how do you learn that? You're in the right place. Watch a video. So up in the corner, I'll give you a link to the 3D Printing Demystified series. You can watch that. But there are hundreds of excellent videos on YouTube about 3D printers. Spend some time learning the components before you open the box. Okay, you've successfully assembled your printer, or at least taken it out of the box, and you think you're ready for your first print. Stop again. Because even if your printer says it has auto bed leveling, you need to check the bed leveling before you begin. Because if it's off, if it's too far off and the auto bed leveling can't adjust, or let's say you're using a Creality Ender 3, there is no auto bed leveling. If that bed isn't right, your first print will not adhere to the bed. It will come off. It won't stick properly. Maybe immediately, maybe an hour into your print. There is nothing more frustrating than a print that tips over 25% of the way done. So learn how to level your print. How? Watch a video. Once again, there are a series of videos. I have a video on auto bed leveling in Ender 5 that really applies to many of the Creality and the standard Cartesian printers that might be a good starting point. So that's hint number two, level your print bed, even if you think you're ready to print because it has auto bed leveling. Now hint number three is gonna be controversial because I'm going to recommend you spend some extra money, precisely about 20 bucks. 
And you don't absolutely need to spend this $20. It's for peace of mind. It's so that your first experience is pleasant. And the 20 bucks is for a tube of magic goo. Magic goo is a special formulation of a material that you apply to your print bed before your prints. You can use one application of magic goo for many prints. In fact, just a damp cloth can be used to refresh an application of magic goo. And I have found it significantly reduces the likelihood that my print will come loose from the print bed. Now, magic goo looks like a regular child's glue stick. But it's not. It's a little different. And yes, you could use a glue stick. Yes, you could use Windex. Yes, you could use hairspray. Yes, you could use a variety of things. I think it's worth the extra 10, 12, 15 cents, maybe less, maybe a little more to use Magic Goo. So hint number three, use Magic Goo. So you've printed the print, the model that was on your SD card. It came out really well. You're ready to run over to Thingiverse to find another model to print. But wait, you need to do something else. You need to learn about slicers. What is a slicer? Well, basically a slicer takes a three-dimensional model and converts it into individual layers that can be printed on your printer. A 3D printer is like laying bricks, a layer at a time, then you move up, and another layer. So you need to learn about slicers. Well, which slicer should you learn about? If you're using a Prusa printer, use a Prusa slicer. It used to be called Slick 3R Prusa Edition. It's now called the Prusa Slicer. It's a finely tuned ecosystem. It's much like the Apple ecosystem. You buy an expensive iPhone, the software comes from Apple, the hardware comes from Apple. Yes, the Prusa printers are a bit more expensive, but you get an integrated ecosystem. The hardware comes from Prusa, maybe as a kit, maybe assembled and the slicer comes from Prusa. So if you're using a Prusa printer, use the Prusa slicer. For everyone else, I think there are two good choices to get started. There are many more opportunities to select and play with and experiment with slicers, but I think there are two choices you should try. Most low-cost, hobbyist-grade printers recommend you use Cura. I like Cura. I find it relatively easy to use in the basic mode. Many printers come with a profile set up for Cura on their SD card. Unfortunately, it's often only for a Windows machine. I'm on a Mac, so I have to more or less find a profile. We'll talk about that in a minute. But there's another opportunity. There's another choice, and that's Matter Control by Matter Hackers. It's a very easy to use system, and the advantage is that you can plug your printer directly into your computer with a USB cable. Well, you've been told you can do that with Cura. Sure, I guess you can. I've never gotten it to work. And many people have trouble using Cura over a USB cable. So if you prefer using your printer, or you think it'll be easier for you to get started with your printer directly connected to your computer, I recommend you try Matter Control by Matter Hacker. Now the slicer's not as good as Cura, and your prints might not come out as perfect, but it's a great place to get started. In fact, once you become more advanced, if you're using matter control connected to your printer, you can slice your model, convert it to the right format for your printer in Cura, and then load that file into matter control and print from matter control. So to summarize, hint number four, if you're using a Prusa printer, use the Prusa slicer. Otherwise, Cura is a fantastic printer, but if you want to directly connect your printer to your slicer so you don't have that step of loading to an SD card and finding out how to put it into your printer, use Matter Control. Hint number five. You go to use a slicer and your printer's not listed. What should you do? Well, it's really not very complicated. 
There are really a limited number of styles of printers, in particular in the home marketplace. Most of them are Cartesian style printers. Let's say you're using a Creality printer. Maybe you have a Creality Ender 5, and the Ender 3 is only listed in your slicer. Or maybe you have a printer from Monoprice. It's not listed in your slicer. Well, find a printer that is similar to yours, select that, and all you need to change are the dimensions of the printer, the X, the Y, and the Z axis, and then give it a try. In all likelihood, it's going to work fine. Now, there's one caveat. If your printer has auto bed leveling, then you'll need to have a special G code, a special code that's sent out at the beginning of a print to auto level the bed. That should be listed in your printer manual. It's generally the same code. So once again, select a printer that has auto bed leveling and you're probably going to be okay. However, if you don't have auto bed leveling, do not select a printer of auto bed leveling because your printer may not understand that particular G code. So hint number five was you can use any slicer with any printer. Just select a printer that's close and change the dimensions. Now, as you become a 3D printing artist, you'll want to fine tune your slicer profile, but that can wait for another day. Hint number six, it's not you. It may be the filament. Very often the filament that ships with a number of low cost printers stinks. It's terrible. And you go to do your first prints, it comes off the print bed, it strings a lot, it doesn't look very good. Just try a known consistent filament. I recommend two that are easy to get anywhere in the world. One is Hatchbox PLA. It's carried by Amazon. It's very inexpensive and I find it very reliable. Maybe it is not the absolute best filament, but I think it's the best filament for the cost. Another filament, which is slightly better, you'll see the layer lines a bit less, is Matter Hacker's Build Series PLA. That can be ordered directly from the Matter Hacker website. In both these cases, I like to print a little hotter than is recommended on the label. So I print them at about 206 degrees Celsius with a 60 degree heated print bed that's been treated with, yes, magic goo. Now, I have a bonus hint for you. Watch all my videos. Just kidding. No, in fact, the more time you spend watching videos about 3D printing, I'd recommend you start with the 3D printing demystified videos on my channel, but there are a lot of excellent videos out there and you'll need to watch a video more than once. It'll just sort of soak in and after time, you'll just get it. I guarantee it. Anyone can learn to master 3D printing. You just need a bit of time and patience. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this will help you get started with 3D printing. If you're already 3D printing, I hope maybe there's something you learned here. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell so you're notified when I have new videos. Thanks, have a great day, and let's continue to learn things together.